Now let's take a look at what I mean by the word problem. In my heart, I feel that there is really only one problem for any of us. That is, when we allow ourselves to separate from God. But in a very real sense, we can never be separate from God. Yet, we often still believe that we have problems. The problems of disease, discord, fear, anxiety, scarcity, disappointments in others, and so on, are all in our minds. When we truly reconnect to our source, these feelings disappear. I use the word problem as if it truly exists, yet I know every time I use it that it's an illusion. So every time you hear the word, know that I perceive it as an illusion created by ourselves because we have separated ourselves from God. There's a powerful line in A Course in Miracles which reminds me of this lesson. It takes great learning to understand that all things, events, encounters, and circumstances are helpful. We can learn to view every crisis as an opportunity, which wouldn't necessarily make life easier, but would make it more satisfying. We would never be able to view anything as a negative occurrence because we'd see everything as useful. Our conditioning is so strong that we often have far greater faith in our problems than we do in our ability to no longer have them. We often display a much greater faith in the power of cancer or AIDS than we do in the power to heal them. The evil, the pain, the anguish are of our own creation, and they represent opportunities to gain greater learning. I ask you to keep an open mind as we travel this path of healing to bring peace back into your life on a permanent basis. And now let me speak to you about what I mean by the word solution. I once sat in on a meeting of Alcoholics Anonymous. The words of a sign on the wall kept gnawing at me throughout that meeting. It read, your best thinking got you here. I thought how true that is and how it applies to all of the circumstances of our lives. Our best thinking is exactly where all of our so-called problems exist. If we couldn't think about them, they would not exist. What we need is a change in thinking to realize that a connection to the divine is what eradicates our problems. You cannot send problems out of your life by attacking them or understanding them in more depth. Instead, you correct the error in your thinking that produces the problem in the first place. Once you bring a correction to the problem, it no longer has any validity, and it disappears. We correct these errors with the creation of a new spiritual delivery system. This is the basic introduction to the idea of having a spiritual solution available for every single problem. Here are some specific suggestions for removing doubt from your inner inventory. Keep in mind that doubt not only inhibits your sacred quest, but can also be a destructive force in your daily existence. Make a decision that you are going to meet the invisible God within, the loving presence, so that you will know her. This means being willing to spend time in the inner silence of your being. Create the time and space for quieting and listening. Do nothing else but do this daily. Keep in mind always that doubt is produced by your ego. Doubt is not a part of your higher spiritual self. With this awareness, you can learn to observe your doubt rather than choose to own it. Make a list of the beliefs that you still hang on to which no longer serve you. Seeing them in writing will help you identify how absurd it is to stay rooted in the beliefs of others. As you examine your beliefs, see how many start with should and shouldn't. These kinds of sentences were your earliest training and may still occupy such a large space inside you that you no longer have room for any new knowings. Keep in mind always that doubt is a mental experience. If you want a thought to disappear, you can very simply send it away in this moment, just as you can refuse to think an unpleasant thought in any moment because you are in charge of those thoughts, so can doubt be eradicated when it shows up. Say to yourself as if you are two people, the one talking and the one listening. I have this doubt because I have allowed the persuasions of others to become my own beliefs. Now I will think for myself and know that I do not have to live with doubt.